let's take a look at a new product we've made now. This is the Cleanamp Pro for Game Boy Original. So we've had the Cleanamp Pro out for a long while for the GBA. And we've recently released the GBA SP version. And all the pros are really is the known clean amp that we've sold for years now, uh, the loudest, cleanest amp for your retro consoles, but in a wire-free form. So with this kit now, all we have to do is place the ribbon over the backboard in the right position, and you'll find that it aligns nice and easy to the pins. So there's three pins over here, one pin here, and one pin here. And then once in place, the pad is left down here for you to solder an original speaker or one of our new speakers on. The first few hundred will come with this extra capacitor that we'll just tack on over here. Uh, these caps aren't enough for if your power board isn't able to generate rapid change in voltages. With the clean power, it's easier. But either way, we want the extra capacitance on the board. So if yours comes with this little cap, I'll show you where to place it. If it doesn't, you don't need it. Let's just start by placing this on the board and aligning it with the bottom three pins over here and the bottom pin down here. So you know you're going to tack to this pin, these three pins and this pin here. So with that known, let's just get the soldering iron and just apply some fresh solder to them pads. And this will help when you come to uh, fit the board that you're dealing with nice, clean, fresh solder. Now those are pre-tinned, let's just place the board down and make the connections. I would probably start with these three over here. So similarly, you can also pre-tin the pads on the Cleanamp Pro with solder. Like so. And then grab a little bit of flux and just place some flux on the ribbon and the pins just to assist with solder flow. Get a blob of solder on your iron. And then using tweezers, let's just align the first three pads. Use whatever technique works for you. You can kind of run solder down like that. Or you can try to blob solder on one pin at a time. And keeping the board clean while it's still warm, just get your IPA fluid and just clean up the pins. Moving down to here, you'll see you've got quite a lot of flexibility to position the ribbon. Pre-tin this pad. And so long as this is pre-tinned and you've got a nice ball, this one will be just as easy. Slide it in and just warm up both pins. Quick clean. And the last pin is this one here. Pre-tin the board. Move it into position and solder. And that's all there is for soldering, literally those five pins. So we have the power pin, the headphone disconnect pin. So when the headphones are inserted, we disconnect the speaker from sound. Uh, the ground pin and the left and right audio channels. We'll connect the speaker here. And when it's in a shell, this is in the perfect position for your original speaker to sit and be soldered in place. Now, as I mentioned, if your board is one of these early versions, uh, you'll have four smaller capacitors here. On the next version, I'm just going to replace it with one big one. This works better than the four small. So if your kit comes with this, it sits nice and easy between the two. And then just make a connection to this pin as well. Once that's on, we'll reflow that pin. And you just have that nice little extra capacitance that helps with the sound quality. So to test, let's just tack on a universal speaker for now. We sell the original speakers in the higher wattage uh, as well as this speaker. So as long as your speaker, wherever you buy it from, is at least say half a watt ideally, a watt at most, you're perfectly fine. Don't be confused by speakers on the market that some people sell saying the two watt. That's completely a lie and just marketing tactics. There isn't a single amp on the market for retro consoles that pulls even close to a watt. Uh, ours is actually the loudest and pulls, I think, at absolute high peaks, close to one watt. And that's ear-piercingly loud. If you were to be pulling two watts, your console would die from battery drain in less than probably an hour. So a speaker of half a watt is more than enough, and one watt is literally as much as you can pass through a speaker of this size anyway. 
but the ones that say 2 watt on the back are literally re-stamped versions of the 1 watt. They're completely fake specs, and there's also no need for them. So with the speaker on, let's just power up this console. Let's chuck in, say, Pokemon Gold. And before we do that, let's make sure we actually connect the wires the right way around. I'm upside down here. There we go. So we've got 5 volt there. And if we turn on, you can see the audio there. And the volume wheel is here. Let the game load a second. And then you can see we can turn the volume up and down. And there's the volume control. And this is a lot louder. I don't know how loud it comes through on speakers. But this is a lot louder than um, the current amp. So we've tuned it to match the loudest that this console can really output. If you struggle when you turn the volume up, as I mentioned, if the console disconnects, just add extra capacitance to the line. Uh, the next version, we're going to add plenty over here to pretty much support even if you're not using clean powers, if you're using old regulators. But with a clean power and the little cap, you should be fine. But if you get it powering off under high audio levels, just add extra capacitance here. Any capacitors will do, aluminiums, tantalum, ceramics, any you like. Just literally chuck on one or 200 microfarads until your power board is happy to deliver that extra power. The same kind of goes for any mods. If you're doing IPS mods, uh, most people upgrade to our clean power board because this board cannot deliver generally enough power to handle most mods. So even an amp, when it's loud like this, these original power boards will struggle. But as you can see on this one, it handles it perfectly fine. But that's due to the extra capacitance. So just bear that in mind whenever you're modding at a Game Boy. These old power boards are pretty useless for power delivery and very useless. I think they can deliver about 200 milliamps. So just make sure to either upgrade this or support it with extra capacitance. And that's now another console with a super easy install for an amp. So I hope you enjoyed this one, and I'll catch you guys in the next.